you know the song, can you join me? Let's sing it tonight together. Can we sing it together, everybody? something very very important in the book of are you are we there yet john chapter 2 can you please project it for me john chapter 2 from verse 1 hallelujah 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 can we read together i hope you can see it one two three go can we read together Verse two. Three. Please bring it down. Can we work on this sound? I'm not enjoying myself. Alright, um, take me back to verse three. I'd like us to notice something very, very important. I want to give us a template for the wine story. And I want to make us understand something. Because your worship will not be fruitful to God without an understanding. You see, the woman at the well of Samaria, I think the woman of Samaria at the well with Jesus, said to Jesus, um, was it Jesus that said? Say, ye worship what ye know not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I love us to have an understanding tonight. Tonight is going to be mighty. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be wonderful. Tonight is a solution to many persons tonight whatever sickness whatever problem whatever issue you came up with tonight will die at this altar Uh, i i speak by the certainty of the spirit so i'm telling you what god will do here tonight or what he has started doing so i want to say something to you that you do not lose the essence of tonight the essence of tonight is not to Jamboree. I I signed up with my life and destiny that I will never be part of anything called music jamboree. And so if I should only move, I should move because God is about to do something. And often here on earth we must understand that we are the move of God. So we will only move because God has moved. And our aim is simple. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. So quickly, let's rush. Now, look, take me back to um, chapter, um, verse 1. Verse 1. Let me read down. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Verse 3. Now, I want you to take note of this. It's very, very important. Scripture said, and when they wanted wine, and when they wanted wine, one of the very important factors that necessitated the miracle that Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee was because the people wanted what? Wine. Scripture said, and when they had wanted, when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto them, they said unto him, that's unto Jesus, they have no wine. Now, I'll, I'll have you know that 
from the beginning of the feast they have been drinking but at the point the wine got finished and it's important for us to know that the wine got finished but the scripture said and when they wanted wine can you take me to um, Isaiah chapter 55 basically when we talk about the wine story I would love us to understand something very phenomenal that the wine here is symbolizing the Holy Ghost hallelujah it's symbolizing the outpouring the influence of the Holy Ghost in the life of the believer it's symbolizing the effect of the Holy Ghost in the life of the believer we first noticed that the manifestation of the Spirit was likened to drunkenness at the first manifestation of the Spirit in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 are you following me tonight hello please if, if I'm making sense respond okay so I will know if I'm really carrying us along so what I'm trying to say is there is a peculiar manifestation of the Spirit that is synonymous with the manifestation of drunkenness that is because in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 the very first time the Holy Spirit came down from the earth into humans scripture said they were speaking in an unknown tongue as the spirit was giving them utterance but here's what's striking that as they were speaking in these unknown tongues the hidden people who didn't know Jesus people who didn't know much about the Holy Ghost they saw this type of manifestation they said to themselves to, uh, uh, this type of manifestation can only be likened to, to drunkenness. That's to say, what these people are doing, we have seen something like this somewhere. I don't know if I'm flowing tonight. Are we getting this? So they said, plus or minus, these guys must be drunk. So they accused the apostles of getting what? Drunk. And I tell you the fact flesh and blood did not reveal that to them it was actually the spirit that revealed it to them because when they said these people were drunk they were not lying it was true they were drunk because even peter and the apostles themselves they could not even understand what they were speaking they were speaking in an unknown tongue do you wonder why most of us don't really find the speaking in tongue thing funny for example, I myself don't find it funny. But then, that particular kind of manifestation can only come up when you are full of the Holy Ghost. Anywhere the scripture said, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, you always see, and they spoke in another tongue. Or they prophesied. Or they spoke. You will always see a speaking following. So we know that whenever you are filled, the next thing that follows is a speaking so tonight we, 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 we've come out the way from Uniport, from Prof. Harcourt, to tell us that the end time agenda, God's agenda for the believer, God's agenda for the church, is not just for the church to walk powerlessly, but for the church to walk filled up with him. God's agenda for the church is that when the people, when the church, any Christian is walking on the street, People can look at this person and say, yes, they have been with Jesus. So, let's uh, take me to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, chapter 5. Let's see something there. Think from verse 17. Let's see something very, very important. Okay, take me back to 16. Okay, let's start from 14 14 I think 14 let's start from there so therefore he said awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light see then that your work circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil 17 wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of God is Wisdom is an understanding of what the will of God is. So let's go to 19. Okay, 18. Now he said, I'm being not unwise, but understanding of what the will 
of God is. Now let's look at what the will of God is. And be not drunk with wine. So one of God's will is that your drunkenness should not come with what? Wine. But now let's see his will. He said, wherein is essence, but be what? Filled with what? Be filled with the spirit. In other words, we exchange being drunk with wine with being filled with the spirit. So, I tell you something. The same thing that wine does, the same thing that alcohol does to the addict, to whoever takes it, that is the same thing that the Holy Spirit does to whoever he lives in. And I tell you what he does. You see that man called Paul? I tell you, Paul was not himself. I tell you, what happened to Paul when that Paul was drunk? Did, did, did you read in that did you read that place in the Bible where the scriptures a prophecy came that if you go to Jerusalem, something will happen to you. But what did he say to himself? Necessity is laid upon me. It doesn't matter what that, we have signed up for this. And so Paul could boldly tell you that the life I live is not me that lives. In other words, something is living through me. Listen to me, even the law does not hold a man guilty whenever he does anything under the influence of wine. Hello? If the case is that you are drunken and you did something out of drunkenness, they will not hold you guilty. That's why they will have to advise, do not drink recklessly. What I'm trying to tell you is that the man who is drunk with wine, something is happening to that man. That's why, you see, whenever you are drunk with wine, with alcohol, you are not in full control of yourself. And I tell you what happens to you. That thing that lies more abundantly inside of you starts unveiling. If you've been trying to suppress lust, the moment you underwine, it shows up. That thing that has been hiding inside shows up. That is because you are no longer in control of your will. Hello? So, can we relate that to the same thing that happens to the Christian? When you are under the influence of the Spirit, that which is abundant inside of you in Christ Jesus unveils this stuff effortlessly. So I don't know about you. I came tonight not to have a usual worship concert. Hallelujah. I came tonight to do one thing. I came tonight to say to God, we are tired of this status quo. It just has to be more than this. It has to be more. It's gotta be more. Listen to me. If this is all there is to Christianity, then I tell you we have nothing peculiar. Can I shock you? If all you are experiencing now is all there is to Christianity. Believe me, we have nothing peculiar yet. Outside the eternal life, outside all that, you can see Christians say it, quote all the scriptures. We are blessed with all riches, heavenly blessings in Christ Jesus. And yet that Christian is so much in poverty. That Christian can't even afford five naira to drink pure water. And so how do you tell the sinner? That we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. You see, some of us we know that scripture that says, By his stripes we are healed. We can quote it. But why is it that some of us, whenever we get sick, the next thing we do, we rush down to the hospital to get tablets? What happened to by his stripes we are healed? You see, some of us. And the, 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 the Apostle Peter in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 he met a man at the beautiful gate 
limb. Scripture said, He said to the man, Silver and gold have I known. I need us to understand something there. But he said, Such as I have. You can only give what you have. So, no wonder why some of us are so quick to giving out sorry to the sick. It's because we are so full of sorry. Some of us, we can see the blind person on the street begging money. Of course, we have millions of people in the bank account, so we can give to the person. But what happened to silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What happened to that scripture? Do we just read it and we say this is one of those fables in the Bible? Listen to me, God is as ever real as before and is real today. So, I tell you what I came to do. I came here to empty myself before God. I came here to say to God, fill me with the overflow. I came here to say to God, I have written down dimensions I want to operate after today. Hear me. What makes you relevant in the presence of God is your personal expectation. Scripture said, and they wanted wine. There was something they wanted, and that thing they wanted located the miracle ability inside of Jesus and want. So I also draw another parallel from the woman with the issue of blood. Now listen to me. Crowds, people, they have been touching her, they have been touching Jesus. They have been touching Jesus, but one touch was spectacular. Can I tell you what made that touch spectacular? It is the same way we all will be here singing songs to the Lord, lying on the ground, running about and jumping. But can I tell you what will make mine, my own spectacular? What will make yours spectacular? It's simple. It's simple. It's a predetermined heart that says, if I can but touch the hem of this garment, I will be made whole. In other words, your expectation directs the anointed. Without the expectation, the anointed will come into your life, but it will start checking what it will serve. It will start checking the, what are you sending me for? What did you call me for? Because the Bible says, and he sent forth his word. Because if he has to send forth his word, that means something has to attract that word. So, the anointed will be searching, what, is, what am I here for? So I tell you something, what makes you relevant, what will make you relevant tonight is your expectation in the presence of God. I don't want to feel like the majority that are used to the presence of God, that comes to the presence of God, and we know how it's all about. We know that from opening prayer, we will get to charge, from charge, and every, after everything, we go home. What happened to the scripture that said, and we all with open faces beholding, as in the class the glory of God, we have been changed. Brethren, we go to church Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What is happening? I tell you the secret. It's either we are beholding, or not with an unveiled face. That's where the problem lies. It's not as though we are not beholding. So that scripture, we, we have turned that scripture to say, and we all beholding with a veiled face. I tell you the fact. So it's either we are beholding with a veiled face. And can I tell you what that veiled face is? The veiled face of pride. Ego. The veiled face of sin. Some of us are so full of ourselves that we cannot admit to God, Lord, I need help in this area. We are forgetting that the scripture said, come now, let us reason together. So today I want to give you a template on how to drink. Let's go to Esther chapter 1. I want to tell you how to drink because there is so much of wine today. Listen to me, if you come here sick and you go back sick, Believe me, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. Esther chapter 1. Can we read from verse 4? Take me to verse 4. I just want to show something if I drop this mic. Is that, is that so I have a lot of time. I, uh, okay. Verse 4. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even an hundred and four score days, five, and when these days were expired, the king made a feast. Now notice, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in 
Shushan, the palace, brought unto great and small seven days in the court of the garden of the kings of, pa of the palace. Now, verse 6. Excuse me. Where were white, green, and blue hangings, fastened with cords of fine? Okay, take me to verse 7. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold. The vessels being diverse, one from another, and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. Verse 8. Ah, I love this part. Now, please, if your neighbor is sleeping, wake your neighbor. Because if you miss this part, believe me, you've missed everything tonight. And the drinking was according to the law. I love this part. He said, none did compare. For so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. So I tell you what God has done for the wine story. God has told his angels, he said, come, give every man wine according to his pleasure. He said the drinking is according to the law. Now let me tell you the law. Take me to Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 1. And I will show you the law of drinking in God's presence. Are we there? Say, ho, oh, everyone that tested, come here to the waters and he that had no money, come, come here, buy and eat. Yeah, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. I tell you, no man can come to, God, to God's presence without being invited. Nobody, nobody, you do not have the capacity and the ability to appear before God without being invited. Jesus said it. He said, no man can come to me except the Father draw him to me. So we can only come be before the presence of Jesus because first, the Father has drawn us to Jesus. We can only seek God because he has first sought us. We can only love him because he has first loved us. That is why he's the first and the beginning. He's the ending. The Alpha and the Omega, everything. So I tell you tonight, you came here, God planned you. This is my wife telling you. It wasn't a mistake. No, 2,000 years ago, God was aware. He ordained it. He foreordained it in his presence that you will be here. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't. It wasn't. Tonight is only a manifestation of what had taken place. What